What's up everyone? My name is Ricky Staub. I am the founder of Neighborhood Film Company. And this last year, I actually got to direct my first feature film. I hit up one of my, uh, my mentors, someone that I worked for for a long time. His name is Sam Mercer. He's produced films for Sam Mendes, M. Night Shyamalan, and Steven Spielberg. He said, well, first of all, it's very different to tell a story in 60 seconds than it is to captivate an audience for two hours. I was making commercials that were interview based for corporate clients, a lot of really cool work for me, but nothing that I felt that could perfectly transition me into making a feature. And a lot of commercial work, while it taught me everything I know and gave me a real handle on my craft, it wasn't a true expression of my voice and my art. And so I asked him, I said, well, then what do I need to do? And he told me that I needed to make an unforgettable short film. A short film could be uh, just as powerful as a feature film if it contained three really important pieces. The first piece he said is it needs to be unforgettable. When someone watches it, it lingers in their mind. It's something unique about the texture, the tone, the voice of the filmmaker that makes them want to tell other people about it because thousands of short films get made every year. So what unique piece of your voice are you gonna let the world into? Second, he said, you need to make sure that you can prove to executives or producers like him that you know how to work with actors. When the short film, when the cage was finished and it went out into the world, something that was really impressive to people is that not only was the acting really strong, but it was performances from people that had never actually professionally acted before. And so what this did is it instilled confidence, one, into people that were going to put money behind me as a director, but it also instilled confidence in actors I was meeting with that I could actually work with them and pull out pretty great performances. And then the third piece that he said that was really important is that you needed to make sure that the short film had an A, B, and C part to the story. He felt that a lot of short films lacked an arc. You know, they were a really beautiful scene or a slice of life or lyrical or visual but it didn't convey to an executive, to a production company, to a producer, that this storyteller knew story. I think if you're like me and you've made commercials for a really long time, you know what it's like. You can cut corners and do cool tricks and have really cool edits that make you feel something, but you only need the audience to feel something for 60 seconds. But sustaining that feeling for two hours is much harder. <laughs> What actually really helped with the film is uh, we didn't have a million views, but we had the right views. So what I mean by that is people were sharing the film and making other people watch it. So for instance, in my story, you know, we had one of our producers on the short, uh, her name is Stacy and she's a location manager. She actually shared the film with two producers, Jeff Waxman and Jen Madeloff. And she sent the film to them, sent them an email and said, Hey, I really want you guys to watch this film super proud of it it's only 14 minutes long please watch it and as she tells the story she got an email back from jeff that said really nice now if you've seen the cage you know that this film you can't watch it and say it was nice and so she actually called him and said no i need you to sit down and i need you to actually watch this film and he apologized he said i'm sorry i was on a plane i didn't have good reception it wouldn't play and then i forgot about it but had she not actually followed up and called Jeff to watch it, then he would have never watched it. And his response when he did watch the short was, I need to meet these filmmakers. And so that actually started and blossomed what is now uh, Jeff and Jen and Stacy. I've gone on to actually make my first feature film with these producers. The relationships that you make along the way are so important not just important for your soul, for your own person, for having good friends, but for 10, over 10 years, I worked in the industry not as a director. And I made some really lasting, beautiful relationships. And that time that I finally directed something and sent it off 
to other people. I had advocates. I had people that cared about me as a friend. I had people that cared about me professionally and they were willing to not only watch the film but share it with other professionals. I think the best weapon that you can have if you've made a great short film is having a feature script or two. I actually suggest having two really strong feature scripts. And if you're a director that doesn't write, then I suggest you immediately find a gem of a writer, partner up with them and write, 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 and write some more. Being a director and attached to the script as a creator can be one of the most important pieces to launch you from making a short film to making a feature film. Certainly, it's not the only way to go about it, but I, we have found a lot of success in meetings, um, you know, working with producers, working with our agent, being the actual creators of content, being the actual creators of scripts, lends us a lot more power in a room, lends us a lot more power to get projects generated. And it actually, as a director, it gives you a lot more power to convince someone that you are the best person to see it through because you're actually connected to the origin of the material. So for instance, if you're a first time director and you have a really great script that you found that you love, but you didn't actually make it, in the eyes of a financier, in the eyes of a production company, in the eyes of an actor, there's a gap now between do you understand the script as much as we understand the script? They're evaluating something different versus they fall in love with you as a creator on the page. It makes sense then for you to be the director that finishes this project through. I never knew how much I'd be using Photoshop, how much I'd be using Illustrator, how much I'd be using um, Lightroom, all these different coloring programs to try to make really beautiful PDFs to make sure that the vision that's in my head looks good on a PDF. It has benefited me greatly to be able to put together a really beautiful presentation that is representative of the film that that I see, the best case scenario, even something that just wins the day in that email when they're scrolling going, okay, this filmmaker, this writer director clearly has a strong vision. We had two very strong projects we were presenting to people and one of them was Concrete Cowboy. So we partnered up with some really beautiful producers. We got a really awesome agent and uh, we had Concrete Cowboy was getting circulated everywhere. And then I had the opportunity to meet a really great actor, Idris Elba. And that whole project came together from one phone call. Like we didn't even meet in person the first time that we made a connection. And like I was saying, you know, just being on that phone call and making sure that you can be passionate and selling your story as a filmmaker and making sure that they can really understand your heart and vision for the piece, even over a phone call is so important. So do they believe in you in that meeting? Because really in a lot of ways, you're winning your job in that room. You're, you're winning that job on that phone call. And so if you're terrified to be in a room and share about your story, I would take classes. I would practice in a mirror. I would literally script out how you're gonna do it and memorize it, whatever works for you. I think it's really important to be personable and treat all those meetings as though this is your shot to seal the deal. Uh, even on a phone call, I try to imagine that if this is the only shot that I get with a producer or an actor, you know, does my voice contain the energy and the excitement and the passion around this project that they need to make them feel good about their decision? We have been fortunate to sign with a really, really, really strong agent that we love. And what I think actually makes him great is that he thinks and acts like a producer. He is most effective when we're giving him stuff to produce. We're giving him great scripts. We're building great material. We're having great meetings. We're coming out of a meeting saying, hey, can you connect us? They mentioned this project or, you know, can you connect us with this person that they mentioned? You know, we're always deploying our hard work into his hands versus I think a lot of people make the mistake that they think an agent or a manager is actually going to break their career. While an agent and manager will do that, I think it's actually a byproduct of people that are creating beautiful work already. Make sure that you treat your short film 
the same way that you would treat your feature film. If you make it a project that happens on the weekends, it's something that's flippant, everyone working on it for free is gonna treat it flippantly. But if you are putting all your heart, soul, and passion and own money into this project, everyone else is gonna come alongside you. In my mind, I wanted the cage to be a home run. I wanted it to be unforgettable. I wanted it to have incredible acting. I wanted it to uh, have a full arc as much as I could in 14 minutes. I wanted it to be full. If you're not swinging for the fences, why are you even swinging the bat? And so I think it's really important when you go to make a short, why would you spend money? Why would you spend time on making something that isn't going to be in your mind, in your hopes, in your dreams, a home run?